What the fuck? <laughs> Hello there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here with a very special person right here who looks quite traumatized by that Woody Woodpecker impression I just did. But he is here with me, and that person is Kevin Falk. Uh, hey, guys. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I had something planned out, but now just after what Tony did, just disregard all of that uh because that is quite a tough act to follow indeed i haven't really done a collab video in this style before so th this this should be interesting to do for sure as you guys do notice like kevin pointed out we are doing it in this fashion where we're talking directly at each other normally when me and kevin do collab reviews on my channel or on his channel it's normally like i'll do the introduction then he reviews or i review or it's the other way yeah. around but we figured, since Kevin, I know you told me you have no motivation to do your review for Woody Woodpecker on your channel. <laughs> yeah. I figured, you know what? Why not bring on someone to review this very special movie with me? <laughs> um, so, yes, that's the movie. That's we're going putting to it lightly, my dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, that's for sure. The movie we're reviewing is Woody Woodpecker. It is written and directed by Alex Zam. We have Eric Baza as the voice of Woody Woodpecker. And the film stars Timothy Olmanson. So Woody Woodpecker is about when Woody is getting his home destroyed because Timothy Oldmanson's character plays this lawyer um, and he wants to basically destroy his home so he could build this house. But of course, Woody doesn't like that. So what does Woody do? He does everything he can to destroy uh, Timothy's plans. <laughs> so going into uh, Woody Woodpecker for me, um, uh, now I'll just say this. I didn't watch much of the cartoon, but I did watch little glimpses of it. And I remember I enjoyed uh, for what I saw of that cartoon when I was very, very young. Uh, but when I saw the trailer for this movie, when they were doing a live action hybrid film, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> film fan actually is the one I watched this movie with. I figured if I'm going to watch this movie, I'm not gonna do it alone. I'm gonna drag someone along with me. I ended up dragging my poor best friend, 22 Tiger Dude to literally, AKA Tony to literally, watch this with me um so yeah thank you very much for that film fan and so i saw this movie and after seeing the movie well after before i say my thoughts tell me what were your expectations going into this kevin um to be honest with you i was planning on avoiding this movie completely I thought oh it's a direct to dvd movie it's not one that i have to suffer with and then of course my dear friend came the plants uh entertains the idea watching the movie with him and i'm like you know what this movie is probably gonna be shit i've heard nothing but terrible things why don't we sit down and watch it i didn't watch a trailer or anything all i knew is what you guys said that it was a direct to dvd movie similar to you i did not really watch a lot of woody woodpecker i might have watched like one or two of the uh old cartoons but He's a very one joke character. There's not really a lot to him. I I really did not have much hype for it. And uh, just jumping into it, this was pretty much exactly what I expected to be. Woody Woodpecker is literally everything I hate about modern day kids films. Uh, it's just so crude for the sake of being crude. It's very kitty. It has basically no sort of stuff for adults whatsoever it has some of the most predictable and cliche stuff i've seen in a while uh and just it's so unnecessary like everything about this movie just feels unnecessary it just feels like they did it because they were out of ideas they're like oh what's what's the you know what's what's a cartoon we haven't done before oh woody woodpecker Let, let's just do that and now here we are with the uh woody woodpecker movie yeah to jump into my thoughts uh I thought this movie was really bad and not guilty pleasure bad. I just think it's a straight up bad movie. Yeah. I honestly hated the majority of this movie. Once again, thank you for that film fan. But uh, of course, Kevin, we got to get I do have a few positives with this film. Uh, to be fair, 
I will say that Timothy Oldmanson, who is the main star, he plays this lawyer, he plays the father. Out of all the actors, he seems like the one that's trying, at least in my eyes, he's the most... I, I didn't see that. <laughs> Uh, for for me at least, I thought he was the most tolerable. That's okay if you didn't feel that way, but for me, I thought he was the most tolerable performance. He was the only <laughs> tolerable performance because I'll get to the other performances later on. But yeah, I thought he was trying. I thought Eric Baza, who does the voice of Woody Woodpecker, I will say he does mm -hmm. do a very good job of capturing the voice of Woody. Like he literally sounds like Woody. From the cartoon and i will say the animation on woody is decent it's not anything that great but it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be i think the animation is just decent at best and finally i will say once in a while there was an unintentionally funny moment in this film there's some stuff that happens in this film that is so funny that i couldn't help but laugh there's a scene where a character gets hit with the broom and it's oh my god <laughs> it's one of the funniest things i've ever seen it's just too bad there aren't more moments like that in this film but when there were moments like that it is quite enjoyable and that's all i got for positives so kevin if you even have anything good to say you go for it all right so unlike you i have like almost no positives with this movie but there actually are a few i tried to really be fair here um mm -hmm. Okay, I will definitely agree with you on Eric Baza. I actually think that he is pretty great in this role. In fact, I think he's so good that I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe commission a Wood Woodpecker series starring him, you know, as the character in like an animated show. I honestly I wouldn't watch or anything, but I do think he does have a future in kind of recapturing uh, that character. Again, the movie surrounding him is truly awful it really is a shame because he actually is very dedicated like this wasn't really as one note as i expected he actually did do a really good job and to me really did seem like he paid a lot of homage to um the original voice actor i really was impressed by him in this film and like you said um i do think there were quite a few unintentionally funny moments now i do want to preface this like i said i did not watch this movie alone i did in fact watch it with uh you know auburn wonder aka and the plant and if we weren't watching it together, I don't think I would enjoy it as much. In fact, I probably would hate it way more than I do. Like, I hate this movie with a bur I hate this movie a lot, but I think I'd hate it even more if I wasn't watching it alone. It's dumb, it's awful, but there are truly some unintentionally funny stuff, um, both in the humor and both in some of the plot points that are some of the dumbest uh, stuff I've seen. But if you're watching with a friend, it's some of the greatest stuff you'll ever watch. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, those are my only two things with this film. Okay, let's start off with the actual character, Woody Woodpecker. Oh, my God. Um, now, like, like me and Kevin have said, Eric Baza really does try his best to capture magic of Woody. He really does sound like Woody. The voice acting is not the problem. The mm -hmm. character, the oh. damn character is the oh big problem. This character is so annoying. In my opinion, I'm pretty sure in your opinion as well, Kevin, this character annoyed the hell out of me. And this movie tries so hard to make you feel bad for him at points, but no, I'm sorry yep. for everything this character does. I could not uh, get behind this character at all. I seriously couldn't stand Woody. Every time he came on screen, I just wanted someone to basically hit him with the broom like that character in that one scene. Just trying to do anything to just demolish the whole plan. I was just like, oh, just get off of the screen. I mean, pretty much what you said. Like I said, Woody Woodpecker is not a complex character. All there is about him is that he wants to foil plans. He has, you know, like I said, he wants to keep trees around, which we'll get to the very forced, like, message in this movie, because it's one of the most forced I've seen in a, any kid's movie in a very long time. We'll get to that later, but um, they try so hard to make this character fun and dynamic, but uh, the other thing you didn't talk about is how modern they try to make this character. There oh my god, yes. There yes. amounts of references to pop culture have him saying the cringiest thing. I don't exactly remember what he said, 
All I remember is that they fell incredibly flat. It really reminded me of like Alvin the Chipmunks and the Smurfs or like they try to update it for modern audiences and it doesn't work at all. That's something I love about the Paddington movies that those movies, they feel timeless. They don't feel like they take place in, you know, 2018. You can watch that movie and I think like years from now, it's still going to hold up really well. This isn't because there's so much dated stuff. There's so many pop culture references and they're trying so hard to cater to like, you know, these like younger kids who are like on smartphones and things like that. And it just comes across as really dumb. And there's so much breaking the fourth wall as well. I mean, oh, yeah, they right. so hard to make this character like the next best thing. And they fail completely. All Woody should have been in this movie is just someone who is foiling the plans. And I don't think he should have been as major as a role as he was in this movie. It should not have, it, it, you know, it very much is his movie. And the show, they want you to root for him, where I feel like the movie would have been better if they kind of did embrace how annoying, like they did showcase how annoying he was, but kind of embrace it and show the more endearing side of him when in reality, he's about as one note I think as any of these characters could really get. I don't think he's the most one note character in the movie. We'll get to that soon. But he's definitely up there for sure. As good as Eric Baza was, this just did not work at all. Yeah, that's a good point about the modernization. I actually forgot about that yeah. part of the movie. But <laughs> yeah, they, they try so hard to be modern in this film. It's not even funny. But you know what? Since you're already bringing up characters, I guess we could just jump into that next. I guess we could combine the characters and the performances. The characters here are about as one note as you can get. I mean, this freaking pen. Look at this pen I have right here. This pen has more personality and more depth than any of these characters in this film. It is quite sad. That closet door right there that's falling, that's falling apart, I think, has... <laughs> than um and he wanted this movie like with timothy Olmanson, even though i thought he was tolerable obviously he still plays that one note father ah. that's trying to connect with his son because his son doesn't like him yes that is thrown into the film we have to deal with the generic father son storyline and of course you know where it's gonna go they eventually connect i really did not care about that at all care about the son i thought the actor you know and i know child actors you know it oh could go either God. way they could either be very good very bad i'm just gonna say right now woody woodpecker has some of the worst child performances i've seen in a long time and you know i really don't like to be harsh when it comes to child actors but i just have to be honest and say how i feel the performances from the child actors were truly horrible. It's very cringeworthy. Same for the father's girlfriend. Holy oh, shit. Oh, my God. oh my God. Yeah, that character was just beyond. Like the, the characters are basically a cartoon. I guess that's the best way to describe it. I mean more cartoon I, than Woody, honestly. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Like it's ironic how Yes, this is a live action movie based off of a cartoon property, but these characters, like you said, Kevin, are more cartoony than Woody, and it's honestly quite sad. So yeah, I really did not care about any of the characters. There's no personality to them. I just found them to be uh, boring and very poorly written. The dialogue, oh my god, there's so many, Holy there's shit. so much painful dialogue in this film that I was just only my eyes and i'm going oh my god for real but i think uh, as even though we have so many cartoony characters i don't think it compares to the antagonists the oh antagonists, my god <laughs> were they just so annoying and so i know i keep repeating it but it's just the best way to describe these characters they really are just so cartoony um they're just cliche it's so unbelievable how poorly written this film is just the performances alone other than the characters were very rough where do i even begin with these characters i mean like you said not only are they generic some of them are incredibly unlikable there's really nothing to them uh timothy Odinson, now like you said i thought you thought he was one of your positives for me and i think that's because i've seen him give a lot better and i've really seen what he can do watch the show gallivant he basically was the star of that show like sure there were other characters in that show but he stole practically every scene that he was in 
And you could just tell that he was locked into that character of King Richard. He just did a phenomenal job in that show. And I think as the show went on, he got much better. Here, he could not be more opposite of what he did in that show. Here, he just seems so stiff and so bored. Like, he didn't want to be there. Throughout the whole movie, he's getting more and more agitated at Woody. Because, I mean, that's basically all his character is. He's there to get angry at Woody. He's there to, like, tell his son that, you know, Woody's terrible and all this stuff like that. Um, you know, he has this, like, complex relation with his son. It's stupid. It doesn't really go much of anywhere. But the agitation he had felt less like what he did for Woody and more like his actual agitation for being in this movie. Like, it just seemed like he was being like, oh, why did I sign on to this? Why did I do this movie. It just seemed like he was so annoyed about doing it. He really wanted this movie to just end. So yeah, unfortunately, as much as I do like Timothy Omenson as an actor, I am not going to sugarcoat. He is horrible in this film. It really seemed like anyone could have played this role. And to me, it seemed like the only reason they got him is so they had someone of somewhat high caliber. Then we get into the other characters, which holy shit. I mean, as much as we dislike Woody, he actually is the least worst part, I think, of this movie. Everyone else is way worse than him. Um, the kid in this movie, holy shit, the kid here. I mean, this kid is saying he's awful is an understatement. He has no charisma whatsoever. He can't act to save his life. The whole movie, it seems like he's reading off a script. He has that, like, whiny, uptight voice and... It's where he just thinks screaming at the top of his lungs like this and saying every word like this is automatically just makes him cute and ignores the fact that he can't act to save his life. Like, that's basically his whole role in the movie. And they spent so much time on this character that it kind of felt like he was to be the main character. He's not, though. The main character of this movie is his father. So I don't really understand why they did that to to be honest with you, if a better role was played, I think it would have made more sense to have the kid as the main character and not the father. It just feels a bit weird that they decided to do that. Um, but there's so much time spent on these ridiculous subplots with him, like this band that he's in and like this girl that he likes. And it's like, who gives a fuck? Honestly, it just felt like it felt like they had nowhere to go with this movie and it's unfortunate because we've been getting some really good i think child performances lately and this kind of really broke that streak i have to say this was definitely not a good example of that coincidentally i'm wearing a shirt that actually exhibits that perfectly it's all the characters from like stranger things and things like that that's an example of good child performances this is not this is just one note it's terrible it's awful, and it's just, it's, I think, as bottom of the barrel as you can get in terms of uh, childhood performances. However, that is nothing compared to what I think is easily the worst performance in this movie from that of Talia, uh, Ale I, I, uh, Alea, Ayea, something like that. Her character, holy shit. I mean, the second she was introduced, I said to Caden, every single thing that was going to happen there, I said to him, point blank, okay, she's going to be the one who's just a bitch, and she's going to be so bitchy to the point where, you know, they have to, you know, they, 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 that, uh, that fucking Timothy Olsen starts to get annoyed, and that's all she's going to do in the movie. That's exactly what she is. She's just there to be the rich bitch that's just annoyed because they're in this, you know, rural area. They're not in a city. She doesn't understand it. You know, she's annoyed by it. At no point do you care about this character whatsoever. It feels like she's just here to create some sort of conflict in the movie, and she disappears halfway through this movie. Honestly, I couldn't even tell. I couldn't tell because her character was that inconsequential. There was no reason for her to be here. You could cut her out from this movie. It'd be exactly the same. There's no reason for her to be here, except, like I said, she's just there to be, like, the antithesis of... Um, you know, Timothy Omenson's character. She easily was the worst in this movie for me and definitely one of the worst performances I have seen all year. She was absolutely atrocious. Uh, like you said with Scott McNeil, here's the thing. Yes, he is an incredibly cartoony villain, but Caden and I had so much fun laughing at him. I mean, this is the definition of just an over-the-top, 
ridiculous, merciless villain who for some reason is in a kid's movie. You could watch clips of this villain and you'd think he's in like a Marvel movie or something like that. So much he is giving to this performance. He's so over the top. He's so evil. And it's just so ridiculous. And it's just, it's really dumb. Like he's like the poacher in the movie. He's doing it for money. You've seen this a thousand times. There's nothing different to him. You forget about him the second you're done with the film. But at the same time, like I said, the acting is terrible, but he puts like a, so much into the film. Like he dedicates so much of his time to this movie. It's almost kind of impressive. And then the only person I really do want to talk about is, uh, is Giordano Largi in this movie. Once again, the exact, exactly how I expect her to play out. You see her in the movie and I said to Caden, oh, She's going to be the love interest. She's going to be the one that Timothy Obenson actually likes and actually wants to be with. And they actually oh, right. get into a relationship. And I'm not going to say what ends up happening there, but you can pretty much connect the dots. I mean, it is very, very um, predictable what happens. Uh, the actress in general, I thought was whatever. Like, she just kind of seemed like some random actress. I didn't really think much of her, to be honest with you. She's like the one performance that... I'm really struggling to both remember, but also don't have a lot to say about. She was just kind of whatever to me. She's there in the film, and that's just kind of it. Yeah, I actually agree. I forgot about that love interest character, actually. Um, I will say, to be fair, she has the least painful performance. Like, every anytime she shows up, it I is will say like, that, yeah. Yeah, it is like a whatever. I will say she's not like horrible whenever she shows up. I will say that love interest, the actress that plays her, um, actually isn't that bad. Um, but yeah, there is that forced romance that goes along with it. You know where it's going to go. There's a father-son thing. There's a thing with the ex-girlfriend. So yeah, this movie is just chock full of cliches. Now, me and Film Fan, we had a lot of fun making fun of the filmmaking because, oh, this, because this film is shot like it's a youtube video you want to know how great the filmmaking is in this film there are scenes where it does these weird little zoom ins like woody woodpecker shows up and it does these weird like little zoom ins that you would do like on a filmora one to share <laughs> editor that uh, the software that i use that, that's what this film feels actually like speaking of the editing it feels like they edited this film on Wondershare Filmora. That's how bad the edit Not was. even Final Cut. They can't even get like the most popular editing software because they're just that cheap. They have to use Filmora. <laughs> Yeah, so the filmmaking here is absolutely crap. It is very cheap. It is very poorly shot. The zoom-ins are very questionable. I don't know what made Alex Zam think, Let, oh, let's just do these zoom-ins. I know directors have their way of thinking, but I really don't know what he was thinking with those weird zoom-ins. It just felt incredibly out of place, in my opinion. Even if it's straight to DVD, you could put in a lot of effort, like something like Cold yeah. and Chucky. Oh my track. god, absolutely. That, that's a straight to DVD movie. Yeah, the filmmaking with the cinematography, how it was lit, you know, obviously in my opinion, it just looks so professional. And yes, I get it, even though I know it's a kid's movie, you could still put an effort into the filmmaking. So the fact that the filmmaking is honestly this cheap and just really poorly edited in general is honestly just really questionable. The zoom in is incredibly unnecessary. They're just trying to, like, add this, like, a statue to, I guess, make it stand out so people can be like, oh, look at the cool zoom in or look at what we're doing here. And it, it's just dumb. Like, I, I don't really know why that needs to be there. But easily when it comes to the filmmaking, I think the worst thing about this movie is easily the animation on Woody Woodpecker. Now, the animation itself isn't that bad. It looks like, I think, how Woody Woodpecker is supposed to look. It's when you compare it to the live action sets, it is incredibly unnatural. At no oh, point yeah, the yeah. Hacker is actually there. You can tell very well that they're just, you know, speaking to green screen. Uh, he doesn't fit in this world whatsoever. And look, the Out of the Chipmunks movies are really dumb. They really are. But I will give it this. The first movie, it did feel like they were there. It didn't feel forced. It felt like Dave was interacting with the chipmunks. I do think in the first one, they did a good job of actually making them feel like a presence within the world and making it feel like they were actually there. Here, 
it's so obvious that Woody Woodpecker isn't actually there and that they're just speaking to, you know, nothing. And they don't try to, you know, they don't try to hide it or anything, but I think it just makes it worse because of that. It's, it's just so unnatural and the animation and the live action really do not blend at all. The sets are so green screen. Like you can just tell that everything is fake. Nothing about this movie feels practical or well realized whatsoever. So yeah, the filmmaking is terrible. And like Tony said, it really does feel like a YouTube video. It's not shot like a movie. If anything, it feels more like a fan film. Hell, there are fan films I've seen that have more effort put into it than this one. And it's really sad because sure, it is a direct DVD film, but that doesn't mean you can't put effort into it. Like Tony said, Cult of Chucky is a movie that I am baffled as a direct DVD film because of how well shot and how much effort was put into it. Here it just felt like nobody gave a fuck. Like everyone was just like, we're making this movie. We know it's trash. Let's just not try. And look, I always say, even when you know your movie isn't good, you should still try. You should still at least try to put effort into it because at least it shows that you had some hope in it. You weren't just going through the motions and making a movie just to make money, which is very much what this felt like. And yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's just, it's awful. This movie is 90 minutes and oh my God, <laughs> it doesn't feel like 90 minutes in my opinion. I thought it really dragged on. This is not a very well paced movie on top of the very cheap filmmaking and the very awful direction by Alex Zam and just the really knowing characters and you know, all that stuff. And I agree with Kevin, the animation on Woody Woodpecker does not blend with the live action world. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't believe I forgot to mention that, but yeah, I agree with Kevin. It does not blend. But on top of all that, this is just straight up a very boring movie. I cannot believe how slow it was moving for such a short runtime. And it was so slow that by the time this film finally ended, I went, thank God. I was, yeah. I was kissing the ground because man didn't move slow for 90 minutes. Yeah, for me, I would very much agree with that. This is one of those movies where they don't have much of a story, so they spend time on things that really aren't much of anything. Like, they spend so much time on, is this kid going to win the Battle of the Bands? And is his oh my God. going to be successful? And is he going to confess his love for, like, this one chick that he likes? And it's... It, to basically nothing it happens in the middle of the movie it's like never talked about again and it's like why did we spend so much time on this like at times it felt very episodic but not in like a way that like boyhood or ladybird feels episodic or feels like you know we're going through uh, a year of their lives it felt episodic in the sense where it didn't know where to go so it just kind of came up with just random point so they could you know so it could earn its 90 minute runtime and like tony said this movie i don't even think could have been 80 minutes it should have been like an hour long like there is only an hour long worth of story maybe even to be honest with you because there's so much pointless shit in this movie i really hated most of what was going on here the things they should focus on, they really don't. All I'll say is the message, the certain message they, they just try to provide. Um, while, yes, I could see where they try to come from with this message, it just does not fit, especially for a film that's already that already feels very cartoony and very lazy and just very cheaply made, in my opinion. Um, the fact that they try to shoehorn in this message I'm not I'm not buying into this message. I mean, this message is about the environment, which I'll let Kevin discuss because I know he has a lot to say. But yeah, the message here was just very poorly executed. Oh my god, this message. I mean, look, we've seen this message a lot of times before, you know, the whole like save the earth and we gotta stop poachers and things like that. And it is a good message. Like obviously it's something that I do very much support. You know, there obviously is a lot of pollution and things like that that humans have caused and sure there are you know reasons to stop it i just don't think that message should come from a movie about a screeching bird i don't think this is the film to do that at all um it comes and, off as awkward to be honest yeah, 
especially when you couple that with all the comedy and all the like ridiculous stuff that's going on here it just makes no sense whatsoever and the message that they're trying to say again while good does not fit in this movie there are so many character shifts because of this message especially with timothy Ogdenson's character there's a shift that you know it's going to happen but when it happens not only does it feel so unnatural and rushed it feels as if it was just thrown in there just to adhere to this message. And to me, it felt like the only reason they threw this message in here is to mask the fact for audiences that don't really pay attention to the story that we made a film that doesn't really have a lot of substance and tried to add substance to it. And by doing so, just really overcomplicated things and really didn't work whatsoever because this message you're throwing in not only does it feel very forced it doesn't work with the rest of the film this should have just been a really dumb kids movie that was self-aware and didn't take itself seriously and instead it does it actually does take itself very seriously at points and when you have a villain that's so cartoony and ridiculous it just does not blend with overall feel of the film and it is probably one of the most mishandled and out of place and just forced messages i've seen in a while probably the most forced message i've seen a kids movie since furry vengeance uh back in 2009 for sure this drew a lot of comparisons to that overall woody woodpecker is a cheap lazy painful and very boring children's film it's very poorly directed by Alex Zam. It's very poorly written by Alex Zam and the other writers. Uh, the humor really falls flat. The characters are so cartoony, so cartoony that they make Woody Woodpecker ironically normal in comparison. Yeah, pretty um, much. It's shot like a YouTube video, like me and Kevin have already discussed. On the bright side, it was straight to Netflix. I got to watch it from the comfort of my own home. It's just too bad that more effort wasn't put into it. I just feel like it was made for the sake of being made and nothing more. It's a very forgettable movie. And not only is it very forgettable, it's just a very bad movie. It is one of the worst movies of 2018, in my opinion. And I am going to give Woody Woodpecker one and a half out of four stars. Just to sum it up, guys, it's this movie is awful. It does have a surprisingly very committed performance from Eric Baza. It has really bad performances. It has a really mishandled message. It has so many unnecessary plot points, a lot of serious stuff that leads to absolutely nothing. So many terrible performances, really cringy puns. It basically has everything that I hate in a kid. It is honestly really sad when the two-minute short that plays after this movie is more entertaining than a 90-minute movie um, altogether. I mean, there is yes, there is a short after this movie. I do recommend you watch it because it shows what this character was supposed to be, just really dumb and ridiculous. And it works for that reason because it's a two-minute short. It does not occupy a 90-minute film. It's easily one of the worst movies I have seen so far this year. And on my scale, I am going to give Woody Woodpecker a D-. And on Tony's scale, I would give it a one out of four stars. So you guys, that's our review, and I guess you could say discussion too, on Woody Woodpecker. The movie wasn't fun to watch, but I will say the review itself. Uh, this especially was, yeah. With, especially with Kevin. Thank you for joining me, by the way, Kevin. This was a lot of fun to do. Oh, of course, man. Like I said, I had zero motivation to review this movie. Definitely watching the movie uh, wasn't really that fun. I mean... Uh, making fun of it with Caden, that was kind of fun. But yeah, I legitimately did enjoy doing this review with you and uh, definitely would like to do this again in the future. You guys can check me out over on Kevin, uh, over on my channel, just my name, Kevin Falk. Uh, I do movie reviews, occasionally TV reviews and things like that if you guys are interested. And if you guys have seen Woody Woodpecker, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. What would you think of Woody Woodpecker? Did you hate it like me and Kevin? Or are you on the opposite side? Did you actually enjoy this film? And of course, everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here with Kevin Folk. Woo! And don't forget that the both of us will always have... Tiger, Tiger power. power! We never fucking do it on cue! Yay! <laughs>